Welcome to Deep Exploration 6.0 CAD Optimization. We'll review typical issues seen with CAD data, import options, adjusting normals and faces, tips for reducing, and we'll recap with a recommended workflow. CAD files are not easily shared with other organizations because of their extremely large file sizes, so we provide several tools to simplify, eliminate details, and even clean up existing data not needed for the visual message. Combined with compression techniques, we've achieved reductions of up to 200 to 1, where very lightweight, low-accuracy models are sufficient. We'll also show some techniques to hide objects not needed so your frame rate will increase and make for faster development. Let's look at some typical scenarios, then show how to fix them. Occasionally, Deep Exploration imports a few CAD surfaces that are either dark or not visible from one side. An invisible surface means the faces are pointing in the wrong direction in the source CAD file and can only be seen from the inside out. A dark surface can mean that the normals, which define the surfaces that reflect light, are in the wrong direction. Typically, both the faces and normals will be flipped, but they can be opposing as well. Another possibility is that there are cracks or holes in the meshes making a surface appear broken. These can be inherent in the CAD source or can be induced if care is not taken to heal the model before reducing it. First, let's look at how models are imported because this process can add significant file size if not done properly. CAD source geometry is typically made up of complex functions called NURBs which define a 3D surface. The technology actually stems from Bezier curves which similarly use control points that adjust the curves. When importing, Deep Exploration provides an option to import these NURBs and either convert them into groups of triangles or faces in a process called tessellation or store them as NURB surfaces. NURBs can be useful in some cases, such as creating the smoothest possible illustration output with splines. For the purpose of this demonstration, we'll assume that the tessellation option is selected. Higher tessellation results in more triangles, providing higher precision or resolution, but also adds unnecessary file size. This extra detail is not required because smoothing will recreate the curved surfaces, resulting in the same look. Let's try a simple SOLIDWORKS part file to show the difference. If we right-click the solid part CAD file and choose Import Options, you'll typically have the option of selecting the load approach based on the CAD version. We'll select Reader 2009 version. Next, you have the option of choosing to import metadata or PMI such as engineering notes or dimensions typically not needed in the visual world. Since this model contains NURBs, you also have the option to import these surfaces as NURBs. Under tessellation level, you'll want to set the lowest possible without visually degrading the model. Low or medium low is sufficient for quality 3D images. First, we'll try the low tessellation level and press OK. Now click to open the file and inspect the model to see how it looks. Select hidden wireframe to see the mesh geometry. Notice the number of faces is just over 7,000 using the low setting. The scene frame rate is displayed real time along the bottom of the window and represents how fast your computer is rendering in the viewport. Our frame rate is around 40 frames per second. Now let's repeat this using the very high setting. Then double click the file to load it again with these new import settings. We now have well over 100,000 faces. This is much more data than needed. There is so much geometry in this version that you need to get in very close to see the individual faces. If we inspect the model in solid mode, it looks no better than our previous import using the low tessellation setting. Because of this extra geometry, our frame rate has dropped to about half the first load. On larger models, this extra data can really slow down your frame rate as well as the export processes. We'll keep this extra detail for now to show how you can reduce it later if needed. Let's inspect the model for abnormalities in the normals and faces. Everything seems to look fine. Engineering CAD tools provide options to make both sides of each face visible and so does deep exploration. Currently, show back facing geometry is on, which is the default. 
The option to hide or show back faces is under Display and Scene Settings. You can also control it on the Display Settings panel. When we turn it off, notice some of the faces in the model disappear. Since this feature defaults to showing both sides, these problems can go undetected until you export to formats such as PDF. So we recommend that you use the Control H keys to toggle it off, then inspect the model. If we select the model, you'll see it's a single mesh. We can separate the mesh by right-clicking the selection and using Separate by Materials under Tools. If we hide some of the meshes in the back, you'll see the inverted faces from the backside, but not the front. The tendency is to make everything double-sided using this feature on CAD Toolbar. However, doing this doubles the vertices count and increases file size. The better way to correct this is to first select the face. If other faces are part of this mesh, then select the surfaces individually using the Mesh Select toolbar and turn on Select Surface Mode. Select the faces and press Invert Faces and Normals on the CAD tools. Notice they are now visible from the front. It's not very common, but sometimes the normals are opposite the faces, and this prevents scene lighting from reflecting, resulting in darkened surfaces. The faces are correct because they're visible, but the normals are facing inward, which is causing the surfaces to appear dark. The CAD toolbar provides a button to invert only the normals or faces if needed. We'll invert the normals so that they point outward in the same direction as the face and now light reflects from the surface. Don't forget to turn off the Mesh Select mode when you're done editing meshes. Let's show the hidden objects by right-clicking the scene. We've seen how you can invert faces, or normals, or both. Unify Normals is another tool that attempts to fix both. This should be your first option, but it doesn't always catch everything, requiring some independent tuning. The next set of tools allow for further reduction or to remove unnecessary model data. This makes the RH file smaller and more efficient for exporting or rendering. Remove internal parts provides some processing options to hide or delete parts that are inside the assembly and only slow your frame rate. This is only suggested if you don't need to see these internal parts, which is for you to determine. Let's run this tool on our model. The tendency is to choose max quality, but max speed will typically identify more parts and is recommended for efficiency. Choose Hide and Select, then click OK. In this model, there are no internal parts, but on very large models with many internal parts, this can greatly reduce the file size if you choose to delete these objects. The Remove Small Parts tool unfortunately deletes tiny parts without first seeing what was deleted. For this reason, we recommend a search for small parts by pressing F3, selecting the Size tab, then adjusting the slider that filters objects by size. To see your results, press the Select button. If you don't need these details, then hide them on a new layer. To do this, show the Layers panel, click on Create, then hide the layer. We can now isolate these if needed at a later time. Join Equal Points is the process of welding identical vertices to reduce your vertex count, but this is not always needed. Healing attempts to fill cracks or holes in the model which may have come from CAD or may have been introduced during the import tessellation process. Again, this isn't always needed, but can be useful. Reduce Model is a process that reduces the number of polygons, also known as poly reduction. This can significantly reduce the file size, First, click on Reduce Model, and if needed, click on Settings. Here you have an option to create a separate mesh in case you want to keep the original, but this will add to the file size creating a hidden duplicate, so this isn't recommended. You also have options to use some of the other processes discussed, such as Join Vertices. However, on large models, it's typically faster to join vertices and then reduce as a separate step. Let's close the settings and run the process. The default option is to process for real-time reduction.
Once complete, choose the percent reduction by either selecting one of the percent buttons or using the slider in real time. A good approach is to drag the slider to the left until a noticeable amount of deformation is seen, then back it off until the model looks good again. You can further inspect the model in detailed areas that might be important, then continue adjusting if needed. Once you like the settings, click OK to keep these changes. For very large models, you may want to select Non-Interactive Reduction before running the process to save time. To do this, click on Reduce Model and select Non-Interactive Reduction. Now set the percent reduction. Then process it using the percent reduction amount. Use Undo if you want to try with another setting. So far, we've been processing the entire model as a whole. The CAD tools can also be used on selected objects individually. For example, you might want to vary the reduction process depending on where you need detail, such as in a zoomed area. In addition to the CAD toolbar, there are additional options to improve model efficiency and size by right-clicking on the scene under Tools. Remove Degenerate Triangles will remove all triangles with zero surface area, which are redundant. These can come from CAD tessellation errors in the original models. The next three options will delete redundant faces, materials, or meshes if they exist. We've seen Remove Internal Parts on the toolbar, which works at the object level, but Remove Invisible Polygons works at the polygon level to remove data that cannot be seen because they are hidden from the camera behind other surfaces or if the external surfaces have thickness. The default is to analyze the whole scene, which will test the scene from sampled positions as set by the number of samples per 360 degree arc. More samples may be needed if there are cavities or protruding objects in the model that may not be seen using only 10 samples. Camera resolution can also be adjusted for the pixel density during each camera test. This is a new feature in version 6.0 that can remove as much as 75% of the polygons without any visual degradation. The process sends rays out to the scene, and any objects not hit by the light are identified for deletion. It's also possible to test using just the current scene camera in case you need extremely lightweight data. This will remove all mesh polygons that you can't see in the viewport. Now let's assume you only need this model as a single object, meaning you won't need to explode or animate individual objects like the screws. In that case, simply collapse the object hierarchy by right-clicking on the topmost level in the scene tree, and under Tools, select Collapse Hierarchy. There are a few more options to reduce during the Save As process. If you go into the RH file settings, first make sure compression is set to yes. Then reduce the vertices and normals quality when accuracy is not critical. We'll set all of these to 30% and save it under a new name. Our model is now down to just over 50K in file size and there is almost no visible difference from the original 1.9 megabyte CAD file. Let's recap the workflow and some key points. This is only a suggestion and your needs may vary. First, set your import options using a fairly low tessellation level, then open the file. Use Control H to turn off back faces and inspect the model for anything unusual. If you find something hidden or very dark, unify the normals or work on the faces and normals separately as needed. Hide or delete objects that aren't necessary to show then perform a poly reduction to reduce the file size. If you introduce cracks during reduction, then you may need to go back and heal the model. Model reduction is the process of applying many of the tools provided depending on your needs. Some of the key parameters and tools we've discussed include initial tessellation settings, healing and welding, remove duplicate faces, meshes, and degenerate triangles, Polygon Reduction, Remove Internal Parts, Remove Small Parts, Remove Invisible Polygons, Collapse Hierarchies, and Remove Normal or UV Information on Save. This concludes the CAD optimization video, and thanks for watching.